Thank you all for joining us for the thesis and dissertation process, Steps for Formatting Review and Common Mistakes Workshop. Today's workshop speaker is Dr. Jennifer Stevens, thesis and dissertation manager. Jennifer is going to discuss how you can identify and address writer's block as you move your writing projects forward. I'll now hand it over to Dr. Stevens to get us started. All right, thank you so much for having me today. Um, and let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. That way you can see the presentation. Uh, my name is Dr. Stevens and I'm the uh, thesis and dissertation formatting manager. So today I'm gonna kind of walk you all through the um, formatting process, what that looks like and some of the different steps and then go over some of those um, most common formatting mistakes or errors that we see um, students kind of struggling with. And then, um, you know, if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, type it in the chat or raise your hand and I can um, try and unmute you or if you wanna wait till the end, that's fine too, either way. Um, whatever everyone feels most comfortable with. So let me go ahead and talk about what exactly um, today is going to look like. So first we're gonna talk about um, how to prepare your document for your format review. Um, a lot of you are working on your thesis or dissertation right now for the writing bootcamp, um, and maybe you're working on an article, but you're gonna have to be working on um, your thesis or dissertation at some point. Um, so always really good idea just to make students aware of um, the formatting part of this whole process and what that looks like. So we'll go over how to prepare your document for that. Um, I'll show you all some resources that the Graduate College provides for students to get their document ready for review, um, how and when to submit your document for review, and then I'll describe to you the review process, what that looks like and entails. Um, go over how the reviewer will give you feedback and how you'll make those corrections, the steps that you'll take after you receive formatting approval. Um, you're almost done once you receive that, so we'll talk about what that looks like. And then finally, um, at the end today, we'll talk about some of the most uh, common formatting issues that we see students having, um, just to kind of give you a heads up or to start thinking about that format formatting process um, for yourself. <clears throat> so first things first, you're going to finish your thesis or dissertation or doctoral project, and that will require you having your defense. So after you have your defense, um, you're gonna go ahead and complete all of the edits that your committee has for you. Maybe they want something removed or added, um, and you wanna make sure you have your final completed document done before you start um, thinking about sending that into the grad college. Um, and then once you have all of those edits completed, you're gonna use the resources we provide that we'll go over on the next slide um, to make sure your document is in shape. Um, and then finally, like I say, make any edits to your document um, to fit the formatting guidelines that the grad college wants. So what do we have to help you all? We have a lot of um, tools and resources that we provide because we know, um, you know, just finishing your thesis and dissertation can be quite stressful um, and time consuming, obviously. So we want to make the formatting process um, as stress-free as possible um, and as easy on you all as possible. So we provide all of these different resources and I'll go over um, each of these in detail. So first we have our um, formatting manuals. Um, and as you can see in the picture on the bottom right, um, this is where we provide step-by-step uh, -step instructions for each of the different sections of your thesis or dissertation. Um, so we have one for the cover page, one for your table of contents, one for your curriculum vita. Um, and all of these manuals can be found on our um, the main thesis and dissertation grad college website, which we have linked right there in the slides, um, unlv.edu slash graduate college slash thesis. Um, and then once you're on that main website, you'll go down to number five 
And then under organization of thesis and dissertation, that's where you'll find all of these different manuals um, that address each different section. And then we also have a couple of other documents that are helpful to look at, um, like our most common formatting issues. Um, we have a document order, um, uh, document order uh, manual that we provide. That way you know which sections are required, which sections are optional. Um, but everything can be found on that main website. Okay, and then the most recent addition to our resources that we provide students with is our YouTube um, videos. And these are instructional videos on how to format each specific section. Um, so as you see there on the right in that picture, we currently only have three videos. Uh, like I say, this is kind of our work in progress. Um, but so far we have a cover page video, copyright page and abstract section. Um, and all of these videos we try and keep under five minutes because again, um, we know you all don't have a lot of time. And this is kind of a visual step-by-step -step that will walk you through, you know, what exactly is required um, in all of these different sections or what it is that we're looking for. Um, so these you can either find on the Grad College YouTube channel, which is linked right there, um, or if you're on that um, main Grad College TD website, you can find these under number five organization of the thesis and dissertation as well under each section. Um, so we try and have done our best to provide, you know, different types of resources because we know students, you know, there's multiple types of learners and maybe some people um, might like the visual better than just reading the manual or maybe read the manual and need more help. Um, so these videos are really helpful for that. And then our next resource that we offer students um, is our thesis and dissertation uh, formatting office hours. So if you're going through and formatting your document and maybe you're stuck on a particular area um, or you know can't figure out how to do something or just aren't quite sure if um, what you've done is what we're looking for, always feel free to make an appointment um, and this is where you're going to get one-on-one -on -one assistance. Typically, I host these um, for students and I'll send a link. These are all virtual appointments, so you would meet like how we're meeting now on a Zoom meeting um, or um, yeah, on a Zoom meeting. And these are every Tuesday and Thursday, 12 to 2. Um, and during our busier times of this semester, um, we always try and accommodate because we know people are working and have different things going on. Um, so always reach out to our email address there, grad.td at unlv.edu um, to set those up or ask any questions that you can think of. Um, but this is where, again, students kind of have that opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one help um, or even just have me check something, like I say, to make that review process a little easier or faster um, once you get to the end. And then uh, when in doubt, I say always email. So um, if you have any questions about anything or you're just not sure, um, always feel free to send an email to that um, grad.td email address. Um, or you can also feel free to email me, um, jennifer.stevens at unlv.edu. And if you know it's a question about something not related to formatting, I'll still get you to the right person. Um, but we're always more than happy to help, um, you know, assist you in any way we can. So keep that in mind. All right, so you've had your hypothetical um, thesis or dissertation defense, you've gotten all your feedback, um, you're ready to submit your document for format review. Um, so to submit your final document, um, and we always want these to be in um, PDF form, that way as your reviewer is going through, um, you know, they're not making any changes to your document or um, doing anything like that. So make sure you save your final document to a PDF, and then you'll go to that main thesis and dissertation guidelines website that we've been talking about um, throughout. 
And then once you're there under number 10 format review, um, you'll see where it has um, a, a hyperlink to our submission portal. So this is where you're going to just click on that link and it's gonna ask you for some information like your NSHE, um, your chair's name and their email address, things like that. Um, and then this is where you'll upload that final document. And then once we receive notice that um, your document is there and ready um, and submitted, then we send it out to one of the reviewers on our team where they begin your review check. And here on the right, we have a, um, this is a screenshot of the first page of the checklist. Um, and as you can see, each section is numbered. So here we have number one cover page and your reviewer will go through and address all of these different components to make sure that your document is formatted um, how the publisher wants it to be, um, or how they want it uploaded to ProQuest. Um, and usually it takes about four business days to hear back from your reviewer. Um, again, it might be a little faster than that if it's during one of our slower times, um, if it's at the very end of the semester when everyone's turning their documents in, it might be a little more time. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I think the key to making the formatting process as easy as possible and um, as least stressful as possible is the earlier the better is kind of, I think, the takeaway I've learned and have been telling students. Um, so just make sure you can address as much as you think you can or get it as close to we want it as possible. Um, but what will happen is if you do have edits or revisions for your formatting, um, you'll get this checklist back from your reviewer. But here at the top, they'll put in um, which section you need to correct. Um, so if you had an issue on your cover page where this arrow is, you would see a number one. And then at the bottom of that section, um, your reviewer will lay out specifically what you need to change. So for example, um, everyone's title on their cover page has to be in all capital letters, all caps, and then um, an inverse triangle if it's more than one line. And so let's say, you had your title in title casing with only the first letter of each word capitalized, they would tell you to, you know, go, your note would say, please go and um, format your title so that it's in all caps or all capital letters. That way you know exactly what you need to go and correct. Um, so even with the checklist, we do provide you with that, but you don't have to go and look at every single little box and um, go through that. Your reviewer will do that part for you um, and lay out clearly in each section um, what exactly needs to um, be fixed so that you can get format approval. So once you um, get that checklist back from your reviewer, you're gonna take a look at that along with your document, um, make any corrections that you have. Maybe you'll set up an office hours appointment, right? If you're not sure or have questions on how to fix what they're trying to um, have you fix in your document. And so this might be one round of edits, it might be two or three, just depends. Again, I would say mostly on, um, how close your document is to prepared or final um, at the time we receive it. But once you go through your different rounds of um, edits and emailing with your reviewer, you're going to receive an approval email, format approval email, that looks just like this, letting you know that congratulations, finally, um, one more step, one more thing checked off the list, you have received um, formatting approval. And when we send that out to you, um, we will CC your RPC coordinator on there. And this is um, the person in the graduate college that makes sure all of your documents are in. Um, so your committee form, right, your uh, committee appointment form is in and that your um, advancement to candidacy forms are in, all of those things. Um, and once all of your forms are in, they're going to go ahead and insert your approval page, which is going to be the second page of your document. And then they'll also send you the instructions for how to upload to ProQuest. Um, and this is the digital repository um, where all of the 
different uh, theses and dissertations and doctoral projects are housed um, in the library's uh, digital scholarship uh, repository. And that's the final, final step um, in terms of like graduating and being done with um, that process. So that's always an exciting time to be able to upload that to ProQuest because that's literally the last thing you will have to do. Um, and so those are the main steps um, of that process and kind of what it looks like. Um, some students, you know, we receive a variety of different types of documents. Um, some people you can tell use all of the manuals and things um, and the videos and do a really good job and um, have a quick time and quick turnaround. Um, other students, uh, I would say, like if they're not, if they are not aware of the formatting process, then it kind of throws you off because you're rushing and trying to get it done last minute. Um, just makes it more stressful. Uh, but really, like I say, if you start early and take the steps to do as much as you can to get it um, to what we want, then it really shouldn't be that difficult. Um, and another note is that we'll never ask you to change anything substantive in your document. So um, any kind of content changes and things like that, we rely on your committee and your chair um, to make sure that uh, all of the substance is good. So we're just looking at formatting in terms of um, your headings, your page numbers, do you have all of the required sections in the right order, um, just basic things like that, <clears throat> which again, um, is not hard or difficult, but after you've gone through, you know, the months and years and uh, time of completing these documents, um, I'm pretty sure we're all just ready to be done. So always start early and um, that way it's not so much stress at the end. <clears throat> All right, so um, before we get on to um, any questions or things like that, I wanted to cover um, what some of the most common formatting mistakes are, because that's usually uh, one of the questions I get um, at these meetings is, you know, what, what kind of things do we have to think about and look at, right? And what do um, most students kind of struggle with? So I like to just go over these um, and hopefully that might clear up some of your questions, but um, we'll go over any of these and other questions you may have after this. But I would say the, the three main issues or formatting mistakes we see um, have to do with the cover page, um, formatting the page numbers, and then table and figure spacing within your document. Those are kind of the big three, if you ask me. <laughs> so here is a example of um, a cover page. This is from my dissertation. Um, and so everyone in general's cover page is going to look the exact same. Um, and this is the whole purpose of the formatting process. Um, all of these documents will be public. And so they want to make sure that um, there's some kind of consistency between documents, you know, uh, regardless if you're graduating from chemistry or engineering or sociology or history, right? That when someone pulls up these documents, they, they're all kind of standardized and have like a professional look to them. So it does take a minute to kind of make sure you have everything included and in the right spots. Um, but once you do, it ends up looking really nice and professional. And that's part of this whole process also is that, um, you know, again, you've all taken so much time and energy to complete these documents. We want to make sure that when people from the outside are looking at these, um, that it reflects that professionalism and that time that you've put in. Um, so these are, this is an example, like I say, of a cover page. So you're always going to have um, everything centered on this cover page. And the only thing in all caps is going to be the title. And if it's more than one line, it will be double spaced, but that will be the only thing on the page um, that's double spaced. Then everyone will have by, and then you'll have your um, legal name as listed on my UNLV. 
Um, and it's important if you're not sure, um, go ahead and log on to my UNLV and just double check um, because this is also where they get your name for your diploma. So if for some reason you wanna just make sure, um, you can always change it on my UNLV, but this is just what they use for your cover page and diploma and all those official things. So make sure it's listed on there. Then you're going to have, um, oh, and let me add something. All of these different sections that we're talking about on the cover page, they all just need to be at least one space in between. And you can kind of add more here and there to make it more even um, or visually appealing how you like, but there should be at least one blank space to separate all of these different sections. Okay, so then after your name, um, you're gonna wanna include your previous degrees in chronological order. Um, and we, in our cover page manual that we provide, we list out, um, you know, how they should be written at least from UNLV, right? So you'll always put the title of the degree, Bachelor of Arts, what it's in, or um, Bachelor of Science and what it's in. On the next line, you're gonna put the institution. And then on the third line, you're going to put the year. And so if it's your thesis, you'll just have the one previous degree. Um, if it's your um, dissertation, you'll have the two. And then after that section, um, everyone's going to have a line that will say um, a thesis or dissertation or doctoral project submitted in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the, and then on the next section will be the degree. Um, but for this here, it's important that it's split between fulfillment and of, and that that O in of on that second line is lowercase. So again, it's all just little tiny things to look for. Um, but if you know what to look for, um, it makes it really easy. Um, and then we also have a section in our cover page manual um, that will list out each degree for uh, master's and or, um, theses and dissertations and how that should be written out along with the correct department, college, and grad college name. Um, so you'll always want to check that if you're not sure. Sometimes department names change, um, certain things like that. So we do provide that. So after you have your degree that you're getting, the next section is gonna be the department, college and grad college. And then the final section on your cover page is going to be uh, UNLV written out um, and the year. So a month and year. And so the month is always going to be the semester in which your degree is conferred or the semester when graduation is. So, um, it will either be um, uh, May, July, May, August, or September, or December. Um, and that's all in that cover page manual also. So you're going to want to just make sure you have those dates correct um, and that you have all of those different components. Um, and so like I said, it's not hard necessarily. It's just making sure um, you have the right information in the right spot. Okay, and then the next... Um, issue we see a lot of times students having is with page numbers. Um, and you might think, well, what's so weird about page numbers or why is that a hard thing? Um, because typically uh, what I find is that most students, including myself, when I had to do mine, um, most students have not had to do the different page numbers, meaning for the first half of your document, they want lowercase Roman numerals. And then when your chapter one starts, they want Arabic numerals to start. So um, Arabic numeral one will start on chapter one. And I'll show you that. Um, but the first step in you know, using these different styles of page numbers is breaking up your document into different sections so that you can edit the different types of page numbers. So you'll always want to make sure that you have a um, section break um, and the type of section break when you're in Word, it will say section break and in parentheses, it will say next page um, because there's different types of breaks that do different things to your document. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have the correct section break to next page. And you're always gonna want one um, at the bottom of your cover page because this cover page will have no page number. 
Um, and then you're also going to want to make sure you have one um, before your first chapter. Um, and you'll see what I mean uh, here. So this might be hard to read, sorry. Um, but this was the kind of the best way to show the overall thing. So here we have um, a couple different sample sections, right? So here at the top, it says cover page, then the next page would be your abstract, then table of contents, and then chapter one. Um, and to get all of these um, showing on here, you click that um, backwards P, the paragraph sign, um, and then that's gonna show you all of those editing marks, right? So if you click that in Word, um, you can make sure that you have your section break next page on the right place on your cover page. And then, like I say, you're going to want it right before chapter one begins. And once you have those two breaks in, um, then you're going to need to format them so that the front half is lowercase Roman numerals. Um, and this is always going to start with your abstract beginning on lowercase Roman numeral three. Um, this is everyone's document is going to start like this. And this is because the second page is going to be your approval page, which will be inserted for you after you receive approval. So once you have your section breaks in there, um, section break to next page, you're going to go ahead and insert, um, click on the abstract page, then click insert and do page numbers. And then this will pop up those two dialog boxes. Um, well, first it will pop open the one on the left. And then on there, you're going to make sure to select bottom and centered, we want the page numbers, and then also show on first page. And then if you were to click format on that first dialog box, it will take you to this second dialog box, the one on the right. And then this is where you select that you want the lowercase Roman numerals. And um, on the bottom there where it says page numbering, this is where you're going to start at lowercase Roman numeral three and hit OK. And so this is going to make it so that um, on that first one cover page, you have no page number. Your abstract will start on lowercase Roman numeral three, and then that will continue on to your table of contents. Now you'll need to start um, Arabic numerals on chapter one. Um, so to do that, you're going to click on um, Click on the first page of that chapter one and then go into insert page numbers again um, and you'll make sure again that it's bottom centered and as you can see on the bottom there you're going to start on number one Arabic numeral one but the previous page will have that lowercase Roman numerals continuing um, and then one note or tip is Make sure when you're um, doing your Arabic numerals here for number one, um, make sure that it's not clicked on your formatting box uh, or the dialog box link to previous. Because if you if that is clicked, then it will mess up those ones from the previous section. So you just want to make sure um, that all those different breaks are in there and that um, you know, you have the lowercase in the front half and then Arabic numerals starting there. And all of this information is in our page number formatting manual. Um, it's just, again, one of those things that um, I don't think students have had to do quite often or for other papers. Um, so it's helpful to kind of talk through. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about today is um, the spacing for tables and figures. So the rule for spacing is that um, any table or figure or um, algorithm or equation that you have inserted in your document, um, that there has to be two double spaced line breaks um, to separate it from any text that it is near. Um, so if you look at this sample document on the right, um, here it says section one at the top, fun with Latin, so kind of to just mimic um, someone's paragraph they have going. And then you see you have table one. So in between your text that you have and the table, you're going to want two double space blank lines or two double space line breaks right there. And then also, if you have two tables next to each other or a table and figure, you're going to want to make sure that you have two double spaces in between those as well, because those need to be separated. And again, this is um, 
a rule for the ProQuest upload because they want to make sure that if um, someone is scrolling through your document, it's easy for them to um, pick and see right away, oh, this table is here, this figure is here, just so it's nice and clear. And then finally, um, if there's any text below the table or figure, you want to make sure that has two double space lines also. Um, so you always want to go through before you submit and make sure um, that your spacing is correct. Um, and this is also one of those things that students will make an office hours appointment for. If maybe you just want to double check that you're doing it right or that it looks good, um, totally fine to do that as well. All right, well, those are the, the, the main rundown for the formatting process. Um, like I say, it's one of the last things you're gonna have to do before you can take a deep breath and be done with everything. Um, uh, but always feel free if we'll go over some, if anyone has any questions now, but um, I just always wanna reiterate, if you think of any questions later or, um, you know, need help with anything as you're finishing up, always feel free um, to email that grad.td at UNLV email address, um, and we'll make sure to get you um, any help that you need. Let's see. Oh, um, I see there was a question in the chat. I just saw that. <laughs> um, let's see here. So is a section break required for each chapter? Uh, good question, Lois, because actually um, I have students that have to go through and take these out um, a lot of times. So section breaks are not required at the end of each chapter. Um, you're allowed to include them for whatever reason, as long as it doesn't uh, mess up your numbering. You have to make sure that you go through and um, make sure that all your numbering is consecutive and that that looks good, um, but definitely not required to. Uh, the only required section breaks or breaks really that you're going to have is on that cover page to make sure there's no page numbers on there. And then again, um, before your chapter one to make sure that those numbers are separate. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's a good question. Thank you so much. We encourage everyone to ask questions right now. Since we opened the floor up for questions, please um, feel free to unmute yourself or type them in the chat. You can uh, directly chat me and I can ask on your behalf. Let's just give it a little bit of time if people want to ask questions. Yeah, for sure. Like I see the, the main questions that people used to ask or that would get the most is again, you know, what are, what are some of those most common mistakes or what do students struggle with the most? Um, and really, I think um, all of it is relatively uh, simple in terms of, you know, what we want you to do or what they're requiring of you. Um, I think what makes it hard or stressful is, again, if um, you're on like a time crunch and you have to rush and try and hurry and do it all at the last second, right? Because then it gets really tedious and things like that. Um, but for most students, I find that, you know, as long as they're trying and just use the manuals and um, kind of just take a look at it before they submit and, you know, do the best they can. Um, it really tends to be a smooth process. Um, like I say, maybe one or two rounds of revisions and our reviewers are super thorough um, and always really good at, like I say, telling you exactly what needs to change. Um, so this way, you know, there's not a lot of confusion. Um, and if there is confusion, you can always email for clarification or set up those appointments. And what I have students do is um, when we have the office hour appointments, I'll have them email me their document beforehand. Um, this way we can kind of work through it together. I can show them in their Word doc, you know, what we're doing, um, things like that. All right, let me see, we got another question um, to a journal. Okay, so. The committee agreed to have my paper that's going to be submitted to a journal as a thesis. Um, one, according to the grad college guidelines, I need to format it into a thesis format, correct? 
Um, yes, that is correct. So um, you will have to have the required sections. So you might have to like, um, let's say that the the art journal article doesn't make you require an abstract. I'm pretty sure they all do, but in case they didn't, um, you would need that for your thesis or dissertation. So you just want to make sure that it has all those required sections and in the right order. Um, and then that would be the most we would need from you in terms of um, formatting changes. And then um, two, we need to include table of contents, list of figures. Okay, so um, table of contents is one of those required sections. Um, so things like abstract, table of contents, um, curriculum vita is another one, references. Um, those are all required. So you would have to make sure you have that. Now for list of tables and figures, um, this is only required if you have five or more. So if you only have two tables and a figure in your document, um, no need to include that in your table of contents. It's just a part of your paper. Um, but let's say you have like 15 or 20 figures, um, then you're going to need to include a list of tables after your table of contents. Um, and it's going to have that same format, just the title of the tape, number and title, um, and then the page where it's found. And then um, do we need intro explaining paper? Okay, good. So um, in terms of the different sections, the only thing that we um, will check is what those required sections are. So you're going to have to have an abstract and that's kind of like what you're saying there um, in terms of like an intro, Nancy. Um, so you would have an abstract, but then it's up to your committee to say, you know, they might want you to have like a little introduction section in your first chapter as well. Um, but we will never go through and have you, you know, change this and say, um, you know, no, this should go up here in your abstract. We would just tell you if you were missing one of the required sections, like, oh, make sure you um, create a small abstract because that's a required section. Um, but then, it, like I say, it would be mostly up to your chair and committee um, what's included in those sections within. So they might have you do a little intro um, there also, but as long as you have um, those required sections for us, that will be perfect. Um, and then do we need, let's see, I think there was one more intro. Oh, okay. And then same with like tying it to the field of study. Like we won't check, um, that you've done that. Your chair probably will, I'm sure. Make sure you include that in your intro or in discussion somewhere. Um, but we won't, we won't have you, we won't have our reviewers looking for those kinds of things. It would just be like I say, um, those required sections. Oh, and you're so welcome. Yes, yes. Um, yes, let's see here. What I'm going to do. Oh, looks like we have another one. Oh, yes. And always feel free to reach out, all of you. Um, like I say, send me an email. Sometimes um, students just want me to take a look at it. And we do what we call a pre-review. Um, and it's definitely not required by any means. Um, it's only meant to make your life less stressful. So if you would feel better, what you can do is send your document to us before your official submission. And I just go through and I take the actual checklist that we use for the submissions. And I literally just go through and do a review. Um, and this way, you know, if you want to fix as many things as you can before you submit, um, it's helpful for you all to save time and energy and get some of those out of the way. And then it's helpful for our team because it just makes the review process faster because um, you've already taken care of those things, um, but totally not required. But if it makes you feel better, definitely um, feel free to email about that as well. Let's see. And then similar question from Candace. Okay. Oh, okay. A three manuscript document. Uh, let's see here, different journals require different formatting. Correct. So, um, so for us, for those three, three manuscript 
or three article dissertations, we call it. Um, the main thing that we are looking for is consistency. So let's say, you know, uh, one is MLA, one is APA, you know, and this and that, as long as um, your headings are consistent. So headings is one of the big ones. Um, as long as everything is done consistently throughout, that's kind of our main thing. Um, we're never looking specifically for a certain um, type of formatting style, um, but whatever type you're using, it should be consistent. So um, I would say for students doing this, uh, literally probably the easiest way is if you're um, copy and pasting all of those into one document and then going through and then just having to manually um, edit the two or the one that's the different form. But most of the time it should be the same. And so really consistency is the main thing over a specific style, I would say. And then um, for the dissertation document, modify to reflect just one format. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's basically, yeah, the best way to put it is um, whichever style that you that you choose, or I should say also that like your chair and committee decides would be best for your discipline. Um, just making sure that all of those are are the same. And then I would even um, some things should be the same regardless, but just making sure whatever you choose that it's consistent throughout. And that might be one of those things, you know, that you send send it to me before just to look through it real quick or set up a meeting. Um, but we definitely have a lot of students that do that three manuscript or three article option. Um, and it's not, it's not that much more difficult or anything. It's just making sure that um, everything is kind of consistent and flows so that it's like one one cohesive document and not broken up in chunks, if that makes sense. Uh, try not to stress out too much. That's one thing I always tell students that it, it feels like a lot of information and it feels like a lot of things you have to do. Um, but really, we just try and over provide the resources kind of thing to make it as easy as possible. Um, so always, you know, just think about it as another little extra step, but it's definitely not meant to add, um, you know, more stress or worry to your lives. We're here to help. And if you if you do think of questions later, like I say, um, always just feel free to email um, and we get back to you pretty quick. So we try and help when we can. <laughs> I think you guys did a great job and uh, yeah, thank you for offering students to help out for like email wise, that that's really helpful. So you guys can email them for sure. But thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us, Dr. Stevens. And we would like to thank our participants for joining us for this workshop. I do not see any more questions, but as Dr. Stevens said, you can email her. So this workshop will be available in the Graduate College YouTube channel as well. Right. Thank you for having me. I hope everyone has a great rest of their boot camp and um, gets a lot of writing done. I did that when I was doing my dissertation and it was definitely helpful. So um, thank you for having me. And like you said, just reach out if you think of anything else. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.